Thank you to everyone in attendance. I'm very excited to be presenting the method we've developed for validating simulated distances through intermediary optics. In this context, I'll be using the term intermediary optics interchangeably with relay lens or collimator. After introducing our collimator fixture system, I'll be discussing the relationship between working distance and simulated distance. I'll then define the maximum allowable working distance error and the relationship between working distance error and the depth of field of an imaging system under test. We've developed working distance error as a metric for evaluating relay lens performance. We've verified the accuracy of simulated distances by comparing the MTF of images captured in the real world with the MTF of images projected at simulated distances through a relay lens. Measuring the MTF of an imaging system at its operational working distance is extremely important for understanding the system's use case performance. In most imaging labs, it's not practical to test imaging systems at long distances. These distances may range from several meters all the way to infinity. While we recommend that you perform at least one free space test at the intended operational working distance of your camera somewhere in your development cycle, you may run into space restrictions, or you may require a test chart that is too big to manufacture. The Imitest Collimator Fixture is a desktop sized machine developed for testing imaging systems in limited space environments. The fixture includes a relay lens as the main datum point or anchor of the system, and the camera's EPP or entrance pupil position must be centered about the exit pupil of the relay lens. We have a three-axis linear stage gantry that controls the position of the camera, as well as a fourth linear stage, which controls the position between the tip of glass of the relay lens to a transmissive target. By precisely adjusting the distance between the tip of glass of the relay lens to the transmissive target, we can simulate specific simulated distances. Relay lenses used in this system share a common formula for calculating simulated distance from collimator working distance. This formula is defined in equation one and inversely defined to calculate simulated distance, sorry, to calculate the required working distance from a given simulated distance. Here EFL represents the effective focal length of the relay lens and H1 and H2 are optical principal points provided by the relay lens manufacturer. To the left, we have a visualization of the simulated, of the virtual image that we're projecting through the relay lens. In this test, we use the CL736I relay lens, which has an inspectable field of view of up to 70 degrees, meaning you can use a camera with up to 70 degrees field of view. The other relay lenses that work with this system have inspectable fields of view of up to 120 degrees. We've validated those lenses with this same process. The plot on the right shows the, the plot of the simulated distance and the working distance. We have the working distance on the x-axis and the simulated distance on the y-axis. And these points show the actual nominal test distance we chose to validate. As working distance increases at larger distances, simulated distance increases exponentially. Because this is a mechanical system, verification is needed to test the accuracy of simulated distances. In imaging systems, depth of field, or DOF, dictates the maximum allowable collimator working distance error. In equation four, we calculate the total depth of field of an imaging system as a difference between the near and far focus distance. This means that the collimator fixture will have a near and far working distance error for any given simulated distance. When an imaging system is focused at H or the hyperfocal distance, the field of view is approximated to extend to infinity. Hyperfocal distance is a function of the imaging system's effective focal length, denoted here as F, the aperture f-stop denoted as n and the circle confusion denoted as c. 
Note that the image on the left is not to scale as mechanical engineers would like to achieve much tighter tolerances than that diagram might have you believe. Basically, if the distances corresponding to the peak MTF in the real world and the collimator fixture measurements are both within the depth of the field of the imaging system under test, the collimator fixture will pass validation. For our testing, we chose a machine vision camera with a half inch sensor and 10.5 megapixels. It's extremely important to perform this test with a lens that has a lockable focus, as we want the focus distance to be consistent between the real world and the simulated distance image captures. We chose a camera lens with a relatively narrow field of view. The field of view that we're using is about 10.4 degrees. We also achieved a narrow depth of field with the aperture at f over 2.8 in order to push the limits of the collimator fixture system. The hyperfocal distance of this system is approximated to be 87 meters. For cameras with shorter focal lengths, the hyperfocal distance will be much shorter. Because the total depth of field increases at longer distances up into the hyperfocal distance, the allowed collimator working distance also increases. Even though the simulated distance becomes more sensitive at larger working distances, the optics of the relay lens and the camera work together to keep the allowed collimator working distance error in check. In the table on the right, each line corresponds to one of the simulated distances that we have chosen to test. For nominal test distances ranging from 1 to 16 meters, the allowed working distance error ranges from approximately plus or minus 0.9 millimeters to approximately plus or minus 1.9 millimeters. Again, as mechanical engineers, we like to achieve even tighter tolerances than this. We use the Imatest modular test stand to capture images for each real-world distance. We begin by taking a large focus star chart. This is simply a visual aid. We place that on the chart board. To measure distances, we mount a laser rangefinder in place of the camera. Uh, the uncertainty of our distance measurements are about plus or minus 1.5 millimeters. We position the camera at the first nominal distance and we focus the camera on the focus star chart to the best of our ability. And then after locking that focus down, we take a few steps to make sure that we're in the approximate peak focus. So we move the camera towards the target until we notice a decrease in resolution, mark that as A, move the camera away from the target until it falls out of the far depth of the field, mark that position as B, and then the center of those two points, we have our visual peak focus distance. We don't use that distance in our results. We simply use that distance to derive additional increments that we're going to sweep through and test the focus of. So we replace the focus star with an SFR reg target. This is printed at 40 by 40 inches. Uh, we assure that the camera is orthogonal to the target and that the target is centered in the image plane. We take three captures of the SFR reg target at our visual peak focus distance. And then we derive additional distances. So we calculate what would the working distance what would the working distance be if we are simulating that distance? And then we take additional increments. So we calculate what would the simulated distance be if we increment the working distance by half a millimeter, plus or minus one millimeter, and so on. So we capture three images at each additional real world distance at these intervals, and that provides us with 45 total images for the real world. Before changing the focus to the next nominal focus distance, we mount the camera to the collimator fixture and we center the EPP or entrance pupil position of the ROP 736 I lens. We take three images at the simulated peak focus distance as well as each of the incremental distances that we calculated for. For real world measurements, we record the weighted mean MTF 50 at 50% modulus or MTF 50 from all four slanted edges of the SFR reg target. That's these four edges here. And we use the test software to calculate that. 
Um, for one meter, two meters, and four meters, we actually use MTF compensation because the quality of the inkjet target is not quite high enough resolution for these close distances with such a high resolution camera. Luckily, we can correct for that using MTF compensation. For the collimator fixture measurements, we record the weighted mean MTF-50 from all slanted edges of the S1 Plus, and this is a 2 inch by 2 inch chroma glass target. We verify that the focus has not shifted between this test by capturing one additional real world image at the visual peak focus distance. If the MTF-50 has not changed, then our data is considered valid. In each of the following plots, test distances are plotted on the x-axis and MTF-50 is plotted on the y-axis. Images captured at simulated distances are indicated by the red line or the lower line, and images captured at the real-world distances are indicated by the blue line or the upper line. The yellow shading or lighter shading indicates the depth of field of the camera in the real world while the light green shading or medium shading indicates the field of view of the camera through the intermediary optic. At each nominal test distance, the collimator passes validation. The depth of field overlap between the real world and the collimator images ranges from 20 centimeters all the way to 4.6 meters. At these distances, and that's indicated by the medium shading. Sorry, the dark uh, The amount of depth of field overlap increases at, lar at larger test distances. At one meter, the collimator projects images just barely closer than the intended working distance with a working distance error near of about a quarter million. At two meters and four meters, we have a collimator working distance error near of less than or equal to a quarter millimeter and approximately half a millimeter. At eight meters, we have a working distance error near of approximately half a millimeter. And at 16, me 16 meters, we have a working distance error far of less than or equal to a quarter millimeter. This video shows our actual test captures. Again, we take a weighted mean of these slanted edges. This plot is showing just one slant edge from each of these captures. And you can't see a decrease in resolution at this size. Uh, when you zoom in, you can notice a decrease in resolution. The human test collimator fixture passes simulated distance verification at each of the nominal focus distances. At the first four nominal focus distances, the collimator is projecting images closer than the intended simulated distance with working distance error near of less than or equal to half a millimeter. And at 16, millimeter, 16 meters, we have a working distance error far of approximately a quarter millimeter. These discrepancies can be attributed to an imperfect relay lens model, optical defects, experimental error, and or inaccurate calibration. Testing with this method, the CL736i relay lens decreases MTF50 by approximately 8.4%. Some MTF loss is, in, is expected when you add an intermediary optic to the system. However, results of this magnitude can be corrected for <clears throat> Once the MTF loss is understood, it can be compensated using golden or bronze sample testing. Uh, this is also useful if you're doing relative measurements like we're doing here. The test performed here only sample a small portion of the field of view of the relay lens. We'd like to uh, evaluate the relay lens performance further by performing off-axis testing. And simulated distance verification was only performed to a maximum distance of 20 meters. 
we actually took our SFR reg target to the parking lot and we were able to visually verify that the distance in the parking lot and the further test distances on the collimator were correct. However, we weren't able to uh, record any values to those larger distances. So we figure a giant test target, basically a billboard sized SFR reg target would help us uh, evaluate at even longer distances. Thank you to my co-authors and the test team. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to you if there are any questions.